Hello and welcome to the Dream Receiver Show. Super excited today because we have some amazing guests. And today we have our one and only <laughs> Wendy. Oh, forgot the last name. <laughs> Bert Wendy Bergen. Bergen. I was going to say Bertram. Bergen. <laughs> Wendy, I'm super happy to have you here. Oh my Thank gosh. Thank you. I'm thrilled to be here. I met Wendy at the James Malinchuk speaking, big speakers event, yep. right? Uh, and before that, you've been the uh, Make Your Mark student before that. Yeah, Make Your Mark student. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And landmark, landmark, <laughs> many, many, many. <laughs> she is incredible. She has a podcast called Thriving mm -hmm. at, at 60. 60, and that is 60 spelt S I X T Y. It's also A T S I X T Y because people hear thriving at and they want to ah. do that sign, it's not as full. Thriving at 60, the full words. <laughs> right. So how was it that you got so brave to go out and just put this podcast together, right? How many well, episodes Well, I was you? at a Make Your Mark event. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Sam Crowley spoke and he did podcasting and he said something like, I heard him speak and I went, this is where my mind went, I could do better than him. That's why my mind went, I can do that. And um, I just didn't have the knowledge or the technical knowledge. But I thought if he if he could speak, I, I could do that. And so, um, and then the thing that almost stopped me was, I'm not techie, so could I figure out? And so I went up to him and said, if, I, if you're not techie, can you do this course? And he went, oh yes. Well, he wasn't really telling the truth. <laughs> so I hired someone to be with me while I was doing the course and let him do all the techie stuff. And, um, and so that's how I started. And then uh, Sam said, do five a week. And, um, and, he said, and he said, the first hundred, don't worry about what you sound like. And I almost blew it because I let a girlfriend listen to my second podcast. <laughs> and she's very critical. And I almost stopped. And I went, no, I'm just going to... I remembered what Sam said. Do your first hundred and don't worry. And now it's effortless. I've done over 300, yeah. So many times that's what happens. Somebody can just say one little thing or or say one thing that could break the dream, that could stop yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, so you just persevered, yep. even though they said, or somebody said something that was distracting you or yes. saying to stop. Um, also, did you have any listeners or anything like that that had said anything that um, would have stopped you at the beginning? Well, I had a few people, uh, Again, friends <laughs> <laughs> that would listen because I was like, what do you think, you know, and uh, even at 50 and 60, the, you know, my 60th one, they would make comments. But by then I was like, I would listen to what they had to say and look and see if it had value. Like, you know, well, maybe, you know, you can expand, right? And um, so it pays to listen, but not... Like, are they podcasting? Like, are they doing what you're doing? Have they got the courage to step out? And and if not, it's really easy, you know? It's like before I was a mother, I knew how to mother children. I knew you weren't raising yeah. them, right? <laughs> I just knew everything until I had kids. And then I realized I knew nothing. But before I had children, I knew everything, right? It's the same thing, right? That's what I always hear. Um, who are you hanging out with? Who is it that's telling you this? Mm -hmm. Are they doing a business like you? Mm -hmm. are, are they ahead of you? Um, it's always good to have feedback, though. Oh, absolutely. Because of that, I, I understand that. But yeah. Um, yeah, I've been taught like the sandwich method's good because say yeah. something good, say what you can improve on, and say what is good. It's just um, 
to make sure that those um, those be those uh, negative comments or the mm -hmm. room for improvement doesn't stop you in your track. Yeah. So, so um, have this, there been times where you said, "I just want to give up on." Doing yeah, this all there's together. been a couple of times. Um, you know, life keeps lifing, right? And mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I, I would say last fall I was uh, going through some challenges and. Um, lost my confidence in myself for a period. I, I didn't know, I, I'm not usually that way. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't sure what I was going through, but maybe a, even a small bit of depression. I kept getting up and doing everything, but it was just hard to get motivated. And then um, I worked through what I had to work through and, and, I, and I did it by talking to other people. I think we're only as sick as our secrets. So I kept getting down more because I wasn't sharing where I was at. I mm -hmm. kept thinking I should be somewhere else. Like, And then in the speaking of it, I was able to discover some stuff and then just got freed up, you know. Have you ever found that the podcasts are actually helping you to Absolutely. overcome? Absolutely. Do you know what I do? This might sound corny. <laughs> <laughs> But if I'm feeling down, <laughs> I go listen to a podcast and, I have, and I'm like, oh, my, man, you don't sound bad at all. <laughs> I use my own medicine on myself. <laughs> I, I mean, I've listened to your podcast many times and I am a fan, I have to say. You, oh, good. you are really, really amazing. You really are. Thank you. And you have many followers too like yeah it's a how much about about 20,000 20,000 I'm going for a million but 20,000 yeah. <laughs> okay well yes to start visualizing to start. that <laughs> definitely after this episode you will definitely yeah. be wanting to tune in we'll, well, I we'll want, hit the million yeah well I want to make a difference <laughs> exactly uh, on the planet and what better way right is mm -hmm. you know share and and if it resonates with someone you know like they see I can do it they can do it whatever it is you know I started this podcast uh, number one because I heard Sam speak and I went well he's talking about life I can share that I've lived a full life and and uh and I've coached people for years so it was like wow I, I could make a difference instead of like I worked for an educational company volunteering and making a difference. I always have made a difference, but it was like I wanted to reach more people. And so it was like I asked myself, this costs money to do this podcast. If you don't make a penny, would you still be willing? And I was. And it was like, okay, do something you love. I love talking. Yes. <laughs> So do you ever run out of ideas or oh, things to say? No, never. Never? No, never. Wow. Never, never. Just, uh, how, how can you run out of things to say? Really, like, it, it's just, you just have to pick up a book and you can relate to something and go, oh, I could share that or just live your life. If you're, I, I live my life daily expanding myself. You're either retracting or expanding. And I try to live my life expanding it, it, in, in my relationships with my children, in our relationship, whatever it is, like, you know, where can I improve? And not like I'm not okay the way I am, but there's always an opportunity to expand and grow. And, and, uh, and that keeps me alive and excited about life. Like, and I think it, so you don't get bored. I, I don't know what boredom is. And, and so there's always, even looking at a flower, you could talk about, you know, like, someone likes gardening. <laughs> I don't know. So uh, comments, uh, positive comments and, and things, people, feedback that you've gotten or received from yes. others that they have received from you that you've changed them have yes. you got anything like that yes i have i i'm gonna start uh keeping them i was told to keep them as yes. testimonials but yes people have uh acknowledged uh some of the things that i've said and they've related to themselves and they actually out of listening to me understood some stuff that they were going through that they didn't know um and um i think that's cool like you know like you know 
if you have the privilege and honor to to alter one person's life, it's a privilege. But when you get to, uh, you know, like I say, I've been coaching for years, is you get to alter people's perception all the time. It's it's. I, I, I don't know how to explain, it's just, it's, I'm actually moved to tears sometimes when people come up and, and they tell me the, the difference <clears throat> that I've made in their lives and in their, and not only in their lives, because that I've made a difference in their lives, their families are altered, right? Like it, it's like we have no idea. And, and sometimes I won't see someone for five or 10 years and they'll come up and they'll say, something that I said that made a difference I've totally forgotten and and it altered their life and they went on another path what an honor and privilege right like that that their lives are fulfilled because of something I said right like wow it's that real realization of it's really not about us no it's very humbling yeah mm -hmm. and 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 our words create our world, and I never used to know that. I come from a, and I share it in my in my podcast. I come from a uh, an alcoholic background where there was a lot of negativity and there was a lot of violence, and um, and and a lots of criticism. So I didn't grow up being grateful for anything. Um, I'd always find fault with something, and um, now it's like. Uh, the, the opportunity is to be grateful for things. Not that you can't see what's missing and put something in, but not from there's something wrong. And big difference, right? Big difference. And I started, I, I, I don't watch TV, but I was told um, Oprah uh, years ago started a gratitude thing and I I was at a girlfriend's house and she had the TV on and she was saying put a gratitude journal and I started that 25 30 years ago and you know Diane I still do gratitude I, I, I feel like crying I, I every day like every night I thank God and whoever it could be you uh, for, for what happened through the day and and today even when there's breakdowns I look for the gold in that breakdown. What what is this lesson? What am I learning? And and I never and I had I learned that from journaling, and my gratitude, because I, I you know when I first started I couldn't think of one thing to be grateful for. I could tell you what wasn't working. <laughs> <laughs> no, I could tell you twenty things, but and and now. You know, I could sit here for an hour and tell you a whole bunch of grateful things I am. Easy. And don't you find that the gratitude then attracts more to be Absolutely. grateful for? That's what I also continue to find. So um, on your podcast, the last one that I just happened to listen to, I don't know if it was the, the last one was you've it done. The boundary? It was the boundary one. Uh -huh. um, so I've tell done me. about eight on boundaries. I've got to do another eight, so I can't remember which one. So, like, because I, I understand, like, it's great to be grateful, and, and yeah. that's all fine. Uh, but I was curious on on the uh, on the boundaries. When do you um, decide to like? Okay, that's it. That's the boundary set. That's well, when you come to that. I think boundaries are. Um, it's like anger. You get angry. There's a reason. There's a reason, you know, and and you got to pay attention to that. Mm -hmm. Why am I uh, getting annoyed here? And um, and then boundaries are not walls to keep people out, but sometimes people are I don't know quite how to word it but like they're unhealthy for you to be around they don't make you feel good <laughs> and so you gotta look at uh, maybe it's not them maybe you don't know how to say no I and uh, um, I I was just talking to the girls just a little while ago about that it's like in this book uh, uh, Townsend, Dr. Townsend, he, uh, you know, he, he writes about our children, we need to have it be okay for them to say no, right at an infant's. 
I'm watching my granddaughter. She's nine months. And she's such a cutie. And you all say, Annabella, do this. And she goes, Why? and it's like, yes. She, and she's telling you no. And, but if you respect her nose, if you respect children's nose, and they learn right at infancy, then they start respecting when you say no. So it's interesting when mm -hmm. I read that, because I can experiment. I like attracting you. So then I'm with my little granddaughter, and she goes to, she could be quite grabby, like grabbing my glasses, at, and I go, Annabella, no. And she stops and she looks. And I go, good listening. You got great listening skills, Annabella. And my son-in-law looks at me because every time I say no, Annabella respects it, but she doesn't with them. I go, maybe you guys need to learn better. <laughs> I love it. But that, yeah, because I believe that everything has energy. So uh, it's again the like attracting like of you say you respecting the no and then them I guess well, within yeah, boundaries <laughs> but you're teaching them what's neat about that is when they're 13 or 14 or 12 mm -hmm. and somebody with drugs is incur they can say no I don't feel comfortable but if you've been a parent that have not allowed your child to say no then the child will go along with it and they might necess not necessarily want it but they want to fit in. So it's t it, so I don't think there's a fast, it's learning what works and what doesn't work. That's very true because uh, I had someone else on the show talking about when helping hurts and how yes. we can be saying yes, 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 because we think that, oh, they'll get upset if yes. we say no. So um, that goes right in along, along yes. the alignment of that yes so it's very interesting yeah cause some people think help uh, you know a, a helping can hurt but you go to a, a, a you know a dentist and he hurts you at least he does me mm -hmm. does he help me absolutely he right. relieves the pain right uh, what she was saying more is for helping her hurt, hurting that uh sometimes we can over help yes because then they they already they can do it themselves, but then you help them again. And yes. And you help them again. Well, you haven't taught so, them any skills. Like our children, if we keep paying for everything, <laughs> great. And so I it, get to say no to them. <laughs> plus, yeah, saying no can make them grow. Yes, <laughs> right? that's right. Saying no can make you so, grow, honey. So we're running short of time. Oh, good. Uh, I just want to thank you so much for well, thank you. being here on the, um, on the Dream Receiver Show. And I just wanted you to tell our our viewers exactly how they can get a hold of you and um, your email address and well they can get a uh, hold of me by uh, emailing at Wendy B and then that at like the <laughs> like oh, it's not yeah. there <laughs> <laughs> at thriving t h r i v i n g a t s i x t y Wendy B at thriving at 60.com. That's great. Well, we're all looking forward to getting on that <laughs> podcast and just hearing all these great insights and stories. And thank and, you. And, right, thank you Thanks so much for having me. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> so grateful. I want to give you a hug. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>